Another music scene with Gene welcomes Jeffrey Dallet. Yeah. And it's been a, almost a year. It has. It's been a while, yeah. yeah. We gotta, Yesterday we had the full cast of characters. Today it's just uh, today it's just me. All right. Well, you're welcome here anytime. I'm glad well, we, we hooked up. I'm glad Eric uh, found you. Yeah, yeah. Again. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's have Jeffrey Dallet have his way with us. All right. Well, uh, I think I'll, uh, we'll, we'll call this uh, little session a story session because, um, well, right now we, we don't have the uh, luxury of a lot of instruments and a lot of uh, special effects and pyrotechnics and lights and everything, but we do have um, stories and folk songs that are of uh, the issues of today, and though many people... Uh, who are sports fans, know that the uh, St. Louis Rams just moved to Los Angeles. That's where they were before. I mean, they're not originally from Los Angeles, but that's where they were, and then they went to St. Louis, and now they're back in Los Angeles. Um, But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Not football. It's about uh, money. And um, what drives people. And that might be money, just in case. So um, there's a little guy, a, a little man named S. Cronky. No, that's too, that, that'll incriminate him too much. We'll just call him Stan K. So anyway, this song is a little story of free enterprise in the USA. A little song I like to call the ballad of the ruling class. Well, take a taste of a tale that's long gone stale Of the privileged one who's white and male It's so sad, it's actually kind of funny Introducing my dad, he's a VIP He bestows to me things only most people dream So working, well, that's kind of a foreign concept to me I got into school with daddy's dough Did more tokes and blow than the classes I'd go But that's cool cause C's get degrees and D is for diploma Back in Escuela I'd host the best galas Got laid five times by a girl named Tasia Now I'm sitting pretty on a mound of inexperience and countless resources Now graduation, that's a relative term. What do you think I am, some kind of a bookworm? A couple of phone calls and a law firm later, I got the degree to science the haters who just don't work as hard as I do. So let's all rise and salute them. Heaps of mad respect unto them. The more you have, the less you pay for too. Let's all celebrate the lies that say anyone can free enterprise. All hail to the ruling class. Now fresh out of school, you'll understand it's easy to rake in a hundred grand cause the school's paid for, the car's paid for, and that downtown loft, that's a nice little tax write-off. What do you know, I got a brand new company. It's the one dad bequeathed to me at age 23. Now I'm in charge of 25 people, 25 to 35 years older than I am. And it's tough to deal with these working stiff schlubs whose intelligence rivals that of Forrest Gump. So I'm implementing a few new decrees. We're going to be shaving some major pennies. It's not that I can't afford to keep you, Paco. It's just bad business. Words said to me by my boss about four months ago. (laughs) We should all celebrate that one. Get insurance in the private sector. You can afford it. All right. Let's all rise and salute them. Heap some mad respect unto them. The more you have, the less you pay for, too. Let's all celebrate the lies that say anyone can free enterprise. All hail to the ruling class. It seems as though in this country, the jobs that are the most physical, dangerous, and detrimental to your health are the lowest paid without health benefits, paid leave, sick leave, vacation time, or even a retirement plan. Let's take a look at worker Joe, who goes for a job and is granted one by the benevolent white-collar frat graduate who says he'll pay Joe $9.50 an hour to sweep the floors, dig the ditches, hump out the broken pallets. 
Now, Joe's kid gets sick and has to go to the doctor, so Joe has to take a day off work without getting paid to pay more money with a doctor he can't afford with the health insurance that he doesn't have, while White Collar Frat Graduate takes a week to go down to Mexico making it rain with money that could have been spent on employee health insurance. Now Joe's bank account is getting low and Fat Cat Bank says to Joe, Joe, you don't have enough money in your account, so we're going to charge you more money because you don't have enough money, what we like to call a little minimum balance fee. Now Joe's really strapped, becomes desperate, and engages in some rash criminal activity to help pay for his kid's doctor bill, and winds up in a famous U.S. privatized correction facility, which is, uh, well... That's a whole nother story for a different time. So back to the story at hand, shall we? Let's all rise and salute them. Heaps of mad respect unto them. The more you have, the less you pay for, too. Let's all celebrate the lies that say anyone free enterprise. All hail to the ruling class. Now running this company, it's mighty swell, but it's getting old. I think I'll sell. What do you know, there's some aggressive recruiters, so I'm weeding out the best suitors. And bam, before the dot-com bubble burst, I loaded my web gem, but what's worse, I only got nine and a half bill out of it. That's a billion with a B. So now all my employees, well, they're out of work. But don't look at me, I'm not the cold-hearted jerk. You gotta do what you can, and remember, I built myself out of nothing. So I gotta unload some of this money from my hand. You know, I've always kind of been a big sports fan. Everyone's cherished local team is on a veil, so I plunked a deuce bill to consummate the sale, and now I'm an official member of the high-class 1% elite. <laughs> but there's always problems. There's always problems, and let me just, you guys got to hear these problems. See the stadium that my team's playing in? It's shoddy, and that's not going to rake in the money. So you know what I did? You should have seen this. I went out there and taxed my faithful fan community for a stadium, then turned around and raised the ticket prices for that stadium so the very people who paid to build the stadium couldn't afford to get into the stadium. Then I proceeded to field a team that hasn't been competitive since we built the stadium, which is why I said I needed the stadium in the first place. St. Louis, my heart goes out to you. Cleveland, my heart goes out to you. Denver, it could happen here. You never know. Money talks, baby, and we're all listening. Let's all rise and salute them. Heap some mad respect unto them. The more you have, the less you pay for, too. Let's all celebrate the lies that say anyone can free in a prize. All hail to the ruling class. Epilogue. Well, it's been barely 20 years, no real wins and a lot of tears. The team's terrible, my leadership's abominable, and I'm coming off as quite formidable because it's all those coaches' fault and the players are so damn greedy. There's a major dip in the ticket sales, and they're pointing that to me as the one who fails. But I got that twisted, diverted, and perverted, because I'm telling you, a brand new stadium, well, that's the cure for what all ails us. <laughs> but it's only been 20 years. I know, I know, but just listen, why? See, we need those corporate dollars to recruit the ballers who play for the millions that I offer. But the contracts are stacked, so when their knees are waxed, we'll toss them to the side like yesterday's trash without having to pay them what we told them we'd pay them. It's called non-guaranteed contracts, baby, in the most violent sport in America. American Gladiators 2015, or 16, I should say. <laughs> well, it seems the public is onto my shtick. The stadium vote's failing, they're calling me a dick. But have no fear, some other city's got my ear. They're gonna let me in on some sweet real estate deal for a brand new palatial exotic ball game. Well, I guess I don't have to tell you what happened, but a whole new set of suckers is taking in my action. 
the new digs, they're pretty fine. I got a new kid on the way who's mighty primed to take it over and do it all over again. Will the circle be unbroken? I don't think so. Let's all sing it. Let's all rise and salute them. Keep some mad respect unto them. The more you have, the less you pay for two. Let's all celebrate the lies that say anyone can free in a pride. All hail to the ruling. All hail to the ruling. All hail to the ruling class. Woohoo! Right. Thank you. Jeffrey Dale. Yeah, that song had a few words in it. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> what a story. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, story time, uh, kind of taken out of uh, real life. Um, actually, it's, uh, I used to work at this job. Bef- the, the guy who I mentioned in the song who laid me off, who said, uh, it's not that I can't afford to keep you, it's just bad business. Uh, I, I work for that guy, and uh, that's where a lot of that stuff came from. His his son came on board, and then, uh, and he was basically running the joint. He had just graduated from college, and he was like 22 or 23, and and he had his own office, and he had everything. It was just like silver spoon. What can you do? You know, I'm still making my 8.50 an hour, so I can be proud of that one. So. 